In this video, we'll use the Suspension Manager class to save and restore the navigation state and session data, like the selected blog post in the split page file. We'll also replace the default splash screen and background color. Let's get started. Inside our Windows Blog Reader project, go to the Solution Explorer and select the app.xaml file. And what we're going to do is open up the app.xaml.cs file. And I'm just going to zoom in so we can follow along here. And we'll go ahead and full screen this as well. Inside app.xaml, what we'll do is just collapse the definitions. And here we see the on suspending method, and we're going to add some code in here to handle when our application gets suspended. So let's expand our method. And the first thing we're going to do is because this will be an asynchronous process for saving our data, we need to add the async keyword to the method. And in between the get deferral and the deferral complete, we're going to add some code that's going to call the suspension manager for our page to save our data. So we'll use the await keyword, say Windows Blog Reader, and in the common namespace, the Suspension Manager class has a save async method. The Suspension Manager save async method saves the navigation state of the frame and gives the page an opportunity to save its content. And by navigation state, we mean when we're in our application, we may be, say, clicking on the a particular blog, then clicking on the list of blogs and go to the detail page. The navigation state allows us to run the back stack and click the back button to jump back to the split page, then back up all the way to the home page, if you will. Saving that navigation st state means that when we reload our application, we'll have that state of the information for where we were within our application. Now that we've saved where we were from a navigation perspective on on suspending, we also need to load that navigation information on on launched. So let's expand this method. And what we're going to do is right after we build this new frame, we're going to add some code to register this frame. So we'll say Windows Blog Reader dot common dot suspension manager. And that has a register frame method. We'll pass in that root frame, as well as a session state key, and we'll just call that app frame. Now that we've registered our frame when we first build it, what we need to do is scroll down here, and what you'll see is a way for us to check whether the load state was from a previously suspended application, and that's the code we're going to do. And when that runs, we're going to reload our navigation state. Our Windows blog reader, common suspension manager again, this time we want to restore async, restore async, and that will restore our navigation state. Now that we've saved and restored navigation state, what we do want to do is within our application is save any page specific settings when the app is suspended and restored. In our blog reader app, we need to save and restore the selected item in the split page.xaml file. So I'm going to jump out of full screen mode, and what we're going to do is select the split page.xaml file. And we're going to be using the xaml.cs file. So go ahead and double click that. And I'll just zoom in here so we can follow along a little better. And we'll full screen as well. And to just navigate this, let's go ahead and select Outlining Collapse to Definitions. And notice we have a region for page state management that includes methods for loading and saving state. And that's the code we're going to add next. Let's expand the save state method. And what we're going to do is save some values to page state. And what we'll do is use this selected item here. So let's just make sure the selected item isn't null. Assuming it's not null, let's add some code. And we'll get the item title. Just call this item title equals. And here we have our feed item, which we're going to convert the selected item into a feed item. And we're also going to just put parentheses around this. And notice we now get IntelliSense for a feed item because we want to read the feed item title. So at this point, we got the selected item, casted it to a feed item, and then read its title as a string. Now what we can do is just use page state, and that's asking for a key. And what we're going to do is call it the selected item. And we're going to set that to that item title. So what will happen here, our page will call save state. And we're going to get the selected item, convert it into a feed item, and then save the item title. 
So next we're going to add some code into the load state method to load that item based on the item title. So let's expand the load state method and we'll scroll down here and we're looking for restore the previously saved state associated with this page. And we'll see we're checking for a page state for that selected item key that we built before and assuming that has some data let's read the item into item title and we'll read the page state selected item. So at this point we should have the item title and now what we want to do is say feed item selected item equals and we'll use our feed data source get item based on the title and that's the method we built before that allows us to search our feed data source based on title. Now what we're going to do is get a reference to our item view source and the view and there's methods within here to move the currently selected item so let's move current to and we'll move it to the selected item. So just to review, we're going to make sure that we have a key name selected item. If we do, let's get the title from it. And then what we're going to do is call the feed data source get item to search for the feed item that, with the matching title. And then within our item view source is the big collection. Let's move it to the selected item. And that way, whatever you saved as the selected item when the application save state method ran, will now be the selected item when the page loads again. All right, now that we've made these changes, let's go ahead and run our app. Let's select extreme blog windows and sure, let's choose this one as our selected item. Now in our app we have the custom Atari one selected and we're in the split page. Now what we want to do is to simulate calling the suspend and terminate. And we'll do that with Visual Studio but just remember we're on the split page and we have the custom Atari 2600 post selected. So let's click on Visual Studio and you'll see within our process here we have the ability to suspend and shut down. Within this little drop down I want to select suspend and shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And if we jump back to our simulator, our application is now closed. And we'll just scroll over here and we see our Windows blog reader. And go ahead and click it. And notice our navigation state and the selected item has been changed. So we're back on the split page and we know exactly which selected item we had last. Now the last thing we want to do is let's switch back to Visual Studio. And what we're going to do is change some of the assets that are built into our application. So if we zoom in within these assets, we'll see that we have different PNG files representing the splash screen and different size logos for our application. And what we'll do is just change some of these logos so we can have a better splash screen and application logo. Now what we're going to do is replace the splash screen PNG with this PNG and I'll just go ahead and open this with paint. And that's our splash screen. The key thing here to remember is for splash screen the dimensions need to be 620 by 300 pixels. So to add this to our project, there's two ways. We can just take our file and just drag it into the assets directory. It'll ask us whether we want to replace it. Go ahead and click yes, and that'll replace our splash screen. The next thing you can do is scroll down in here and double click on package.appxmanifest to open that up. And if you scroll here, you see a number of different options for images, including logo, wide logo, small logo, and down here at the very bottom, we can set our splash screen and also our splash screen background color. So let's go ahead and just run our application in the simulator. And notice that we have a different background color than our actual image. So let's just change that by setting the background color here. And we can use hex values or just named values. And I'll just use white. And now we see a nice white clean splash screen. Thank mm -hmm. you.